Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to take you to a different part of the Middle East, uh, you know, than we've been seeing for the past few days. Uh, my name is Hur. I'm from Dubai, United Arab Emirates. And when I was in high school, my friends and I picked up a camera, and we hit the malls in Dubai. What was the aim? Um, it was kind of almost spontaneous. We just wanted to stop uh, random non-Emiratis basically the expatriate community in Dubai, and we wanted to explore them. We wanted to see, you know, just wanted to get to know the kind of people who are around. So we, we went to the malls randomly. We were stopping people. We were asking them if they, you know, wouldn't mind being taped. And a lot of them didn't mind, actually. And we started asking them different questions, like, what brings you to the UAE? Um, how long have you been here? Uh, do, you like, do you enjoy living here? Do you, how do you interact with the MRT community? And so forth. And when we compiled the answers uh, in our video at the end, we noticed a very interesting trend. Um, one trend was that a lot of these people uh, who were living here for 5, 10, 15, even 20, 25 years had never or barely interacted with any Emiratis. In fact, they were almost shocked that when we went up to them and we were just casually talking to them and having good conversation, a lot of them actually wanted to talk more with us outside the scope of the questions we were asking them. They're like, you know, so, you know, where, how did you guys grow up? How, and they were totally shocked because they wouldn't interact with Emiratis other than a business uh, level. Now, I want to put this into some context. Um, the UAE is right now 40 years old. It's pretty young, but it's had one of the biggest population growth rates uh, in the world, second only to Qatar, um, in the past 10 years at around 10.6%. So today it has a population of around 8.3 million people, only 980,000 of which are Emiratis. So that's being generous, 11% of nationals in the country. The other 89% a mixture of over 200 different nationalities. Um, now, one would imagine, or one would assume, that uh, this implies it's a, it's a beautiful melting pot kind of culture, right? But actually, it's wrong. And as much as I want to steer clear from cheesy metaphors, it's actually a more of a salad, because the different uh, the different nationalities, the different pieces, they're all very distinct from one another, and they sort of live in silos from one another, especially from that uh, 11%. Um, now, given that notion, I want to go back to them, the 11%. Um, now, as a lot of you might know, Dubai has always been a trading hub way before the UAE was established as a country. So it's not new to the idea of a, an influx of strangers in and out of, of the region. However, um, there's always been a kind of concern, for lack of a better term, about um, interacting with different communities and, and maybe even calling them strangers. And given that the past influx, the 10% growth rate in the past 10 years, has been really fast and really huge and, and, and rapid, uh, the concern has um, grown. Now, there's concern on two levels. So you have the macro level, that's a nationwide government concern, and then you have a micro level, which is an indi more individual concern. Um, on a macro level, you have things popping out like the Federal Demographic Council, which is basically a council um, set up to address the issue of the demographic imbalance and other such things. But I'm not interested today in uh, the macro level. I'm talking more about the micro level and the level of um, individuals. Um, Amongst the um, individual Emiratis, be it whether it's the older generations or even some of people from my generation and, and younger, there's always a notion of fear. Fear of strangers, fear of change. Let's protect what they like to call the national identity. Let's protect the Emirati culture. Now, um, I understand and I actually love and respect the notion of traditions and culture, and I'm a big fan of my culture. but. Um, What's interesting is that, to me is that I find it um, surprising how people fail to realize that whatever it is they're trying to call, they're trying to protect today and they call it the Emirati culture is not what it was yesterday and it's not what it's going to be tomorrow. Culture is dynamic and that's why it's beautiful, it's never static. Um, so um, when, you, when you try to define it and you try to protect it, you sort of set like predefined notions of 
who you're supposed to be when you're part of the culture and what you're supposed to be. And when you do that, you're, you're almost trying, as individuals, as part of the society, you're trying to awkwardly fit into some predefined mold. And then when you, you end up having a generation of people losing themselves in the process and not really pursuing what it is they want to be and who it is they want to be because they're trying to fit in. Um, now, where am I going with all of this and why, why do I think this is important? Um, in my own personal capacity, I've always attempted to break these walls. I've attempted to interact with different people in the community. I've never stuck to um, just the Emirati uh, society, what, be it in school, university, because I mean, we have universities and schools that are only for Emirati nationals. Uh, we were never part of that. We, we always got involved with others. But generally speaking, the more I got involved, the more I realized how others around me are uninvolved. And it kind of saddened me. So I think what I'm trying to do is um, trying to offer some perspective. I mean, we do, we're doing something like amends over here where we're trying to have a platform bringing different people together from all over the world. Where I come from, this platform is a daily thing. It happens every day. It's, it's, it's right there. You have 200 different nationalities at your doorstep. But it's not being sort of taken advantage of. There's a lot of unheard stories and unheard stories from the side of the non-Emiratis and then you get the untapped potential from the side of the Emiratis who are limiting themselves and not learning from you know, one another. There, there's, no, there's no give and take sort of exchange. So, um, I, so like I said, I'm just trying to shed some perspective on it. I wanna, I'd like to pick up that camera again that I haven't touched since high school. Um, even though it's my passion and uh, I'd like to shed a light on what's going on go back on the ground and Because there are some remarkable people I've met from all over the world just in my little town I didn't even have to go past Dubai, you know, there, there are other Emirates, but just in Dubai alone Remarkable stories remarkable passionate people who are also contributing to the development of Dubai and are and consider it their home as well and I'd like to shed some light on that and then open up some room for dialogue maybe through doing that but the biggest point I'm trying to bring across today is whether it's a film or whether it's, you know, social media exchange or whether it's a newspaper article, whatever medium you choose, the idea is to try to provoke a mind shift. Now, mind shifts are, can be tricky, they can be difficult because you're trying, to, you're trying to tackle the problem at the core. You know, you can't really change what people think, nor do you want to dictate what they should think, but you're just trying to open up the chance for someone to break through that shell. Um, when I first uh, applied to amends, um, you know, my, my, the way my core focus was uh, the documentary. But then different things were happening, you know, there's always side projects going on, always initiatives going out town. And then something happened in December that I did not expect, and I want to share this little story with you. Um, it just gave me some perspective on how things, uh, it's possible to sort of push for a change. So we have a national day every year, it's on December 2nd. And um, people, it's a big deal for everyone. You know, there, there's all these official celebrations that happen and everyone goes out to celebrate. But then at night, unofficial celebrations happen. And what people do is they usually hit the streets with their, in their cars, Every, there's, there's like massive civilian parades, but they're, they're unregulated and they're unofficial. And what happens is they end up sort of uh, it's pretty much chaotic and, they end, and dangerous at some, part, some points, and they end up trashing the streets completely. You know, you can imagine confetti and those string in a can things, and it's absolutely horrendous. And I refuse to take part in these unofficial um, celebrations. And as you can imagine, this year we hit the big 40, so it was bigger and badder than, than ever. So anyway, I, the, the, these celebrations happen in different, you know, locations, like... Um, pivot points. So one of them is on, uh, in an area called Jumeirah. And I, I, I was born and raised in Jumeirah. It's a nice little uh, area of Dubai. And there's, this, there's a road that, that, that just, it's just a one horizontal road and goes back and forth. It's around 12 miles long. And they just keep going back and forth that road. Now what you need to know about Jumeirah, just to put things into context, is it's a sort of upscale sort of neighborhood. So it's almost like um, the Beverly Hills of Dubai, if, if I may just use the, uh, um, uh, the metaphor. Um, so the people who live there are sort of like upscale, both Emiratis and non-Emiratis. Non so, so anyway, the celebrations happened and we woke up the next day, streets were trashed and um, 
those of us who don't agree with this sort of thing, you know, woke up like every year, we just wake up and we just go like, okay, this is terrible, you know, again, it's happening, and, but no one really does anything about it. So I was out with my family and I was just checking all the angry tweets on Twitter and how people were complaining about how the streets were filthy and all that. And one of my friends said something like, you know, we should be out there cleaning out the streets. And mind you, if, if we don't, I mean, even if no one cleans out the streets, in, two, in maximum one or two days, the government's going to just, you know, take care of it. But still, it's just the notion that it's, it's, an ang it's a notion that the streets are filthy and, you know, we can't, we're not doing anything about it, nor did we do anything to stop it. So my friend tweeted that and I told him, let's go clean the streets. And he said, are you serious? So I picked up the phone before I answered and I just tweeted a line. I was like, 11.30 um, a.m., meet up point on this beach. Uh, whoever wants to come, get your garbage cans and let's just do it. And the one thing though, I did not tell my parents because this is just to put things into context again. Um, if they hear something like, you know, we're just gonna go out and clean the streets. It might sound very normal um, here, but back there it would be like, what are you guys doing? Why are you trying to do something different? It's inappropriate. You can't be out on the streets, especially maybe even for girls, it's even worse. So we wouldn't tell them anything. We just took our garbage cans, just said, you know, we're just going out, and we just went outside. Started out with around two girls, me and a friend, and we were just cleaning up. Randomly, people would pass by, some people would wave, and they'd be like, what are you guys doing? And slowly, slowly, the, the crowd started uh, growing, and both Emiratis, non-Emiratis, people started joining us, people started bringing in broomsticks and gloves and water and drinks and trash cans. And by the end of the day, we were around 300 people just sweeping the whole street. And we had more brooms than we could even imagine. And it was completely random. And I wanna add that social media helped a lot because the message spread like wildfire through Twitter, Blackberry broadcasts and all that. But anyway, um, so by like, we started off 11.30, by 4 or 5 p.m. we were like 300 people. We didn't even know how to control that massive crowd on that road. And then suddenly the cops show up and we're like, oh, okay, this is getting, you know, this is getting serious. I think we were like, someone came up to me, they're like, hey, what have you done? I think they think we're protesting or something. You know, like, what are you guys doing on the street? So, and of course you need a permit for these sort of things. You're bringing 300 people on the street and it's not safe. So we all kind of like freeze and we're all like, okay, everyone just go home, you know? And then the cops stop and they're like, hi. And we're like, hi. They're like, why did you guys stop? And we're like, well, why are you guys here? They're like, we're here to help you, you know? So, <laughs> so it was great. What they did was they were actually, because it's a three lane road on both sides, so six lanes, and they would be blocking uh, one lane while we clean it up and then they block the next one while we, you know, so just for safety reasons. And uh, I'd like to say before sunset, we cleaned out the entire street and it was brilliant. But I mean, the idea, what, what I'm trying to say here is, I know it's just a small uh, community project that happened, um, much smaller compared to the amazing things you guys are doing around the world, you're changing nations. But the sort, but again, to put it into context again and again, it's it's this, it's the the mentality that was that was the key thing here. It wasn't about getting people to clean a street. It was about that maybe last year you wouldn't even imagine that that people would even consider you know going out on the street. It would be ridiculous. It's something that they wouldn't do. It's something that's out of the norm. And if you do it, you know, you're just trying to be rebellious or trying to be different. And when I came back home, of course, by then my parents had heard about it because it was all over the place. They were actually like, you know, good job, was, but you should have told us it was great, you know, and, and all that. Um, so anyway, that was just a small story of, you know, it, it, it was totally random and unplanned and it just gave me some hope that you can invoke a mind shift if you want to. And sometimes, um, sometimes you just need a little ripple to create that tidal effect that will just break people out of their shells. And I think that's what uh, we've been seeing yesterday and today and hopefully in the next few days as part of the immense talk and everything that we've been hearing has been truly humbling and inspiring and uh, keep doing what you're doing, guys. Thank you.